what's up divas and devos of course you guys know it's your girl april so um it is real talk wednesday i'm not really sure how long this one is going to be because um if you could just tell from my vibe and i do apologize if i'm looking over here because i'm just i'm just really um in a place right now um that is like hard to come out of kind of um, but I have been doing really good, um, but this is like day, I guess if you want to count Sunday as the first day, because it was earlier in the morning, this is like day three, so for me, 72 hours, like, yeah. Um, um, it's just really hard for me right now, and I will explain that to you guys in this video, um, So anyway, I hope you guys are having like a really great week. You know, tomorrow is Thanksgiving, even though it's Tuesday. But by the time you guys see this, like I always say, it'll be Wednesday. So I hope you guys are ready for tomorrow, Thursday, Thanksgiving. Um, I, I'm i going to eat. I'm going to eat for Thanksgiving. Like I, I don't really eat a lot of stuff like that anymore Um, because I've just been focused on losing weight. So I really I, I just try to eat really healthy all the time. Um. And I exercise a lot and things. So I just really try to watch what I eat. But mainly I eat like a lot of salads and I eat like I drink like protein shakes that my doctor um, from the weight doctor has um, recommended me. And I eat like a lot of fruit and vegetables. I don't really eat meat that much anymore. Um, and also because my teeth is jacked up on the sides, you guys. So I, I got so tired of my teeth. Um, the meat getting stuck in my teeth. And I just, the only meat I really eat is chicken now. Um, and normally it's in my salad. Like I eat a salad like every single day. So, you know, I eat like breakfast. I normally have like cereal, which is like special K cause I love special K it has nothing to do with my diet. It's just, that's what I like. Um, and I have like fruit in it or then some days I'll just have yogurt and a piece of fruit, but I am looking forward to Thanksgiving somewhat because, you know, I do like to eat. Um, oh, sorry, guys. I do like to eat Thanksgiving food. I think I think I'm not the only one that likes to eat Thanksgiving food. But so I'm looking forward to Thanksgiving. Um, and yeah, so we did go grocery shopping today for Thanksgiving. Why is my color? Hold on, guys. OK, so sorry about that. I had to like fix the color co color and then I also had to answer my door. Um, so yeah, I'm ready for Thanksgiving, um, somewhat, you know, in case you guys are wondering about the wig that I got on, um, so this wig is like super old, okay? This wig is from May 2013, okay? And I made this when I was still living in New York and I made it for my birthday month of June and... It was simply virgin hair that I had used. And I don't even think they're around anymore. I really don't think that they're around anymore. What well, this was their Brazilian virgin straight, okay? And let me tell you something about this hair. Like, for real, I've had it for almost five years, okay? And I wore this sucker every freaking day for like a year straight. Like, seriously. The only issue that I have is that the cap stretched the hell out. The dome cap stretched out. So, of course, I had to sew it and sew it back together like sew it like I'm um, pinching material and make it tighter so I don't even think it has a stretch to it anymore because when I put it on it's kind of there's, there's no stretch to it so but I love the wig so much that I'm not about to like unsew it and put it on another cap because you know once you take the hair out it's just not the same you, you just don't get the same thing back okay and of course you know I did bleach it I used actually I used a, um um a um, a, a highlighting cap to bleach this hair I did um, and I, I don't really do that as much anymore I mean but if you guys want to see a tutorial on how I use a highlighting cap I mean, you know something so crazy there's there's like two videos like that on my channel but if you want to see a more updated video then you know let me know and I'll do one so yeah I did bleach it and I toned it but the thing about toner it doesn't matter what toner you're using um, I used Wella toner for this wig um, and it does have combs in it because, you know, it does have combs in it. Um, and it also has elastic in it, too, the elastic band. It isn't even elastic, the black elastic. It's not even, like, the black elastic. It's not even elastic that you buy. You know when you have, like 
pants and they have the elastic so one of my kids jeans was too small for them they had outgrew them so I took the elastic you know how you could pull the elastic for your kids clothes to make it tighter you know on each side it has little slots for the buttons so I cut the elastic out of both sides of the jeans and sewed the elastic together and used it for the wig because I didn't have any elastic at the time so that's even stretched out um but that was my my little you know thing I did but anyway, so yeah, I've been having this wig for that long and I actually love it. The hair never freaking tangled ever. It's so soft and just so smooth. But the only thing that it is about toning your hair, because you know when you bleach the hair it gets brassy and you want to tone it to get those orange tones out. The more you wash the hair, if it's your own hair or if it's a wig and you've used toner, the more you wash it, you do eventually the toner does wear out, so you have to retone it. So I have retoned this wig twice, okay? Twice or three times, okay? Because one time it was like it's, it does get lighter than this. This is like um, more more brownish tone, but when I retone it, it gets like a more blondish color. I mean, like this wig is like old old okay so the, the toner does react to it once I put toner in it and I think I have toner too I think I might have to retone this because I can tell when it needs new toner because it starts getting like that brassy look but when it's freshly toned girl it have it looks like more blondish like it's not blonde but it looks more blondish so yeah I've had this hair for so long um and I think it's four bundles if I'm mistaken if I'm correct, it's like four bundles. Um, and I do have other wigs that are this long also, meaning this length of time. Like I have a wig that I made from Best Lace Wigs using their hair, which I love it so much. Um, I made like a Kenya Moore like style. And then I have another wig that I made using Best Lace Wigs hair. And that one is like three years old. But the first one that I made with the Kenya Moore, that one is like five and a half years old five and a half six years old it's like six years old so I do have hair that I do keep for a long time especially because I don't wear it every day but I I was like let me just bring this wig down I think I used to wear it on um this side though the part but it's in the middle so you know I just like move it around or whatever so yeah but anyway so other than that um I hope you guys are ready for the holidays um like I said, I am somewhat ready for the holidays. My son Wuzzle came home yesterday from New York. Um, remember, you guys remember, like months ago, a few months ago, he left to go live in New York. Well, he didn't like it. It was, um, and it's not New York City. That's where I'm from. He lived upstate New York because um, that's where he grew up at. Um, he just didn't like it. It was dirty. And on top of that, the people were just... They're very, very different from the people here. It's like a different... His friends are not the same. Like, they don't really want to do anything. All they want to do is stand on the corner and, you know, like, smoke or, or sell. And he's not with all of that. And they just have, like, a different mindset. And it just wasn't for him. So he was ready to come back home. So he came home yesterday, which was Monday. And then on Sunday, I think, like, Sunday was one of the worst days of my life. So that's why I'm, like, kind of, like, I'm kind of, like, off a little bit. I'm lost. And I really wasn't going to do this real talk because, I mean, like, I'm going to try to get through it. I'm going to get through it. I'm going to do it. Um, but, um, you know, I have been posting videos every day. But, I mean, I don't have to record them. I've got so many damn videos that have been already pre-recorded. So, you know, it's a lot easy for me. And I'm glad that I don't have to record anything since Sunday because I'm really not in the mood but anyway so Sunday ended up being like one of the worst days for me and if you follow me on Instagram then I'm pretty sure you guys are very aware of why um now for one it's hard when you lose someone in your life like you know someone has passed away it's hard and I haven't had to deal with that in a long time but this Sunday was like really tragic for me and it hurt a lot especially because of the way that I found them so you know you know, you guys, this is um, this is hard for me, and um, I just want to share this with you guys because I've noticed that some people, they just really don't care for their little fur babies. And when I say fur babies, I'm talking about my dog, okay? So, you guys know I have three dogs. I have, um, well, I had. Um, I had, um, I have my new dog that's two months old, Luna. Um, she's a little bit older than two months old. She was born August 15th, the day before Mumsy's birthday. I have her. I have my rescue dog, Sugar, who's nine. And I've had her a year this past July. And I had Coco, who is my 
main dog and I've had him since he was a baby like a couple months old and um, I had him for 12 years so um, we bought him actually from the pet store and, and it was me my husband and my daughter Nay so we went to the pet store to pick him up and we we didn't go to pick him up we went to see about getting the dog and Nay just fell in love with Coco and I fell in love with Coco um, make a long story short um, he just became our dog my husband bought him and I told him you're gonna buy the dog for Nay anyway um, you know he's he's almost 12 and um, Coco is so sweet he's always a happy dog like it doesn't matter if you scold him for peeing on the rug like he peed on my rug enough times he just never was like an evil dog he, he might have had his moments cause, you know what I'm saying he would throw shade or whatever but that was just Coco and I was I could deal with that because he lived in the house with all of us plus he was a Gemini his birthday was the 15th of June so you know he was to be expected so but anyway he was always happy you know how you can look at your dog or your cat and you can always tell they smiling like it, it's just weird because I knew I just knew him so um but he was just so rambunctious and he had so much life in him that he would chase he would chase my um, grandson around the house with no problem and he's almost 12 so you know he did change over the years meaning his whole face became like this white color and stuff and you know his fur got a little bit lighter and stuff but he still was like you know, he running and trotting through the house all the time. So anyway, every morning, um, I bring them outside just so they can go outside. Like, you know, I go for my walk at 6 o'clock in the morning, and I take sugar with me. Um, and then sometimes I alternate, and sometimes I take cocoa. But the majority of the time, I take sugar with me because she's really overweight. Like, sugar is, like, extremely overweight, and I don't know how she's got that big. Because they don't eat that much, but she is like huge. So I take her with me, and plus I also take her with me because when I bring Coco, he likes to lick everything and sniff everything. And I don't want him putting strange stuff in his mouth. So a 20-minute walk could end up being like an hour if I take Coco because I have to constantly tell him to stop and let's go because he wants to lick and lick on everything. So anyway, um, this Sunday I didn't get up to go for a walk because you know I gotta take at least one or two days off. And, um, I had to take Tati to work at 8 o'clock. So, at 8 o'clock, at 7.50, because Tati works right down the street, um, 7.50 I told Sugar and Coco, come on, come out of your room, because they, they have the laundry room. It's their room, you know what I mean? They have their big pillows on the floor, like their doggy beds. There's big, huge pillows that they each have. He has, like, a green one, and she has a pink one. And, and then in there, inside the cage, is Luna, because she just... Luna thinks she's a kangaroo. But anyway, and then I have a gate. I don't close the door, because I don't want the door closed. But I have a gate, so that way, you know, the dogs don't go roaming around the house at night um, and pee on my stuff. So... But they still have the door open. They got a night light in there. And then there's night lights throughout my house. So it's never dark because I don't like my house being dark. And anyway, so they be ready to leave because Luna, all she do is you hear her jumping around with that damn belt all night long. And this, you know, she's just a puppy. So she makes this noise. And I'm, I think that they be ready to get the hell out of there because she just, she's a puppy and they're older dogs, you know, so they didn't want to hear that. Well, anyway, right before I left to bring Tati to work, I was like, come on, you guys, you want to go outside? And so... Sugar, she always runs ahead of Coco, but then she'll come back and she'll wait for him. She won't go out that doggy door unless he's with her. So she waited for him, and Coco, he stretches. You know, he's a Dachshund, so he has a long body, so he stretches. And I noticed with him, like, lately, like, he just walks really slow in the morning. And I'm like, okay, because he's tired, because he's been like that. Lately, he's been, like, tired in the morning. So he don't want to, you know, walk, walk fast. So he just likes to walk slow. So Sunday he walked really slow, but you know, I just like, oh, he's tired and stuff. And plus he don't like to go outside. He does not like to be outside for that long. He just doesn't. So, you know, you have to like close the doggy door so that he doesn't, he doesn't come back in because he feel like 30 seconds is enough. And like, I want you to go do your business and get some fresh air. So I, I let them out and I closed the doggy door and I went to Tati's job with her. I dropped her off and then I went and got some groceries because she worked at the grocery store. And... All together, we, me and Tinky came back. I probably was in the grocery store for like 30 minutes, and then we came home. Now, normally, I'll leave them outside for like two hours, but this Sunday, I just didn't. I just don't know why. I just didn't want to leave them outside that long, so like an hour. 
So I fix their food for them, you know, I make them food every morning and stuff. But I mix their wet food with their dry food and stuff and give them fresh water. And I do this for all three of my dogs in the morning, you know what I mean? I put their food down so as soon as I open that doggy door, they come through and they just know, like, okay, she made our food. Well, Coco always be the first one to come through because I always have to tell him, you have to be a gentleman and wait for the ladies to come in, mean and sugar, because he will push her out the way. And so... Let me back it up. Like a few days ago, before Sunday, I think it was like Wednesday or Thursday of last week, I opened the doggy door and I was like, come on, come inside. Sugar came in, but Coco didn't want to come inside. He was sitting on the patio chair. And I was like, he always sits on the patio chair. And I'm like, Coco, come on, your food is ready. And he just gave me this look and I was like, are you going to come in the house? So I was like, okay, maybe he got one of those little sticky porn, um, prong, um, like prong, like pork, pokey things in his foot. Um, so I'm going to, and his paws, so let me go out here and put my shoes on, I'm going to check. And I looked at his paws, because normally when he has, like, a little prickly porn, um, um, look, a little prickly, um, like, thing in his foot, he will come to me and I'll take it out. He didn't have any in his paws, so I was like, are you going to go in the house? Your food is ready, you know, I'm talking to him, this is what I do. I'm like, you want to come eat? Your food is ready. And he just gave me this, this look, like, this, this stare. And I, you know, being that I know Coco, I know he don't like to be outside. He will whine after like five minutes and start scratching at the doggy door. It was strange that he didn't want to come in. So when he gave me this look, I just was like, and I felt something. And then I just was like, um, I just kind of brushed it off because he had this look in his eyes and this look on his face when I was talking to him. And I was, and he just gave me this look like, like I was supposed to know something. And then I really did feel something, but I just kind of like brushed it off. And I just was like, okay, Coco, just come on. I'll carry you in the house. So I carried him in the house and stuff. And like, you know, for the next couple of days, I had noticed like wet spots on his pillow. And I was like, Coco, are you pee in the bed? And I really didn't think much of it because it didn't look like pee because it was very little. But and I was like, maybe he's drooling in his sleep because they drool in their sleep. Sugar snores so loud in her sleep. Are you talking about you? Yes. She snores so loud in her sleep, you'd think she was a human being. So anyway, I didn't really think much of it. He didn't, he wasn't like eating all his food, but I figured, okay, maybe I'm giving him too much because it was a little bit more than normal. And you know, but he would come back and he would finish it later. Or sugar fat butt would try to fade it later. But anyway, Sunday, you know, I told him to go outside and um, back to Sunday. And then, you know, I fixed their food and I opened the doggy door. Now sugar came dashing through the doggy door from the left side of the house. And I'm like, all right, where's Coco at? Because he's about to come now too. I didn't see him. So then I was like banging on the glass um, door because it's a glass sliding door. And I'm banging on it. And I'm like, Coco, normally he'll hear that and he'll come. Because sometimes he don't hear me click the door open, the doggy door. And he didn't come. And I kept on tapping and tapping and yelling for him. And he wouldn't come. So I said, let me go put my shoes on and go out here. So I go get my shoes on and I go to the side, to the right side, because on the right side is like our other window to our other living room. And it's also a wall, so you can't see the, the neighbors. But it's also where you would leave your garbage cans. And then there's my son Wuzzle's room window too. And then there's the gate to get in and out of the side of the house. I've caught him that over there a few times because it's very shaded. So he likes to be in the shade. Um, and it's cool over there. He wasn't there. So I'll, I'll get back to right there on the back patio and I'm looking and I'm like, he can't fit through the fence. Like the fence is just like slots because he's not that thin. So then right here next to me on the left of me is my two grills and I have a couple chairs in my grill. So I was like, well, why would he be on that side of the house? There's nothing but our whole landscape is rocks. So why would he even be over there? Unless he's the, the 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 sprinkler system, the water hose, the water thing, the faucet isn't turned off. Maybe he's getting a drink. I don't know. So anyway, I walk towards that way, and as soon as I hit the ends of the wall, and I look down, my dog, my dog was laying there, lifeless. Okay. This has been like the hardest Sunday, the hardest day of my life. To find your dog just laying there dead, 
Okay, he was laying. He doesn't even like to be outside. For one, he hates to be outside. And then for him to lay on the rocks and die was like the worst thing ever. And I just started screaming. And screaming and just telling him to please get up. Please, Kugel, just come on in the house. Get up, get up, get up. And he wouldn't get up. And I ran in the house and I just started crying and screaming. And I had to call my husband. And I just kept screaming and crying. And my daughter, Nay, and Mumsy came busting out of the rooms. And they just was like, what is wrong? What is wrong? And like, it's like 9.15 now, okay? Um, and I just was like, Coco's dead. Coco's dead. And Nay just was like, where, Mommy? Where? And I showed her where. And, um... I guess I just didn't really want to realize that he was gone because they had to tell me and put me away and she was like mommy he's gone his eyes are black and I just was like he's not he's really not and I just went in the house and I got a blanket to wrap him up in like a towel like blanket and this towel blanket, we had it for, like, oh, my God, since Mamasy was a baby. We've had this towel set for a very long time. It was the last one. So we didn't even really dry off with it like that anymore. But I went and I got that out of the closet, and I picked him up. And I had this really long laundry basket, this really long one. And I put him in there, and I just brought him in the house, and I petted him. And I cried, and I kissed him goodbye. It was like the worst moment in my life. I had to call my daughter Tati, and she just left work and came home. And um, I had to call my son Wuzzle. And Tati found somewhere to get him cremated because other places, like, they do mass cremation. Like, I'm not about to have my dog cremated with anybody else. And um, that 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 afternoon, um, it was like probably like about twelve thirty. Um, we took Coco to get cremated. Um, I didn't get his ashes back yet. They said like in a week. Um, and they give you like this this clay puppy paw print with him. And it's just been so hard for me. So. I apologize, you guys, but let me tell y'all something. I, that's the first pet I ever had. My mom never bought me a pet when I was a kid, so I mean, I had a rabbit, but I was like probably like two, so I don't even remember that. Okay, um, I just know I had a rabbit from pictures, but. Coco is my first pet. I never had a pet before until my husband bought that dog for me and Nay. And so that was my first pet. And it feels like I just lost my whole, like, I just feel like I just lost one of my own kids. Like, seriously. Like, this is so hard. Like, I have never in my life had to deal with this. Ever. And I'm trying so hard to be strong because I know, like, my dog, he don't want me to sit here and cry over him like this. But it hurts. Like, I look at these other dogs. I'm like, well, I just wish Coco was here. And then today made it even worse. So I go on YouTube. And um, I have remembered that I had did, like, quite a few videos with Coco. Okay? So um, I went on YouTube and I watched them. And he was just jumping and running and stuff. And it was just so cute. I really miss him a lot. I do. Guys, let me get a break for a second. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I gotta say, I really do miss him a lot. And I'm gonna just try to get through this. And that's my husband, so that's the last interruption. He was just calling to make sure I was okay, but we speak to each other all day long. But anyway, um, I, um, I just really do miss him a lot, you know what I mean? I miss Coco a lot, and I, I, 
I have never in my life had to deal with anything like this. So when I when I see things that happen with people in their pets, like I get, I'm like, like I don't understand. Like people, they just can give their pet away. Like you know, what I'm saying if they move in somewhere and they don't accept animals, they just leave their pets behind. They don't care. Like you know, like who does that? Like I'm just saying, like that's just that's just not me. I. If I had to, if, if I couldn't move somewhere because of my animals or they didn't accept pets, then I guess I wouldn't be moving there because I don't understand how people could just be so cruel to their pets. Like, I love my animals. Like, every last one of the animals that I have, I love them. I've never seen myself being a motherfucking dog whisperer where I got three pets. I, I, I was just fine with just Coco and that was it. And then I got sugar because the girls wanted her and she, she's, she's quiet and she's different, but she's cool too. And I like her, but she has been acting really funny lately. She never comes upstairs. She never comes upstairs anymore, but lately she just doesn't want to be downstairs anymore by herself. So she's been like following me around a lot and she sleeps, she's in here now. She sleeps in here. And like I brought Coco's pillow bed up here for her because she she smells him on it, but it's just weird. So she likes is lonely. I'm lonely, and um, like I just don't understand people. But I just thought I would share that with you guys because that's what the freak I'm going through, and I'm pretty sure that I will get over it. You know, I try not to think about it because, you know. It, that it's hard but that's a part of my life so it's hard not to think about and then you know what I'm saying like I keep constantly feeling like I hear his whining or his barks and I might be bugging out but I keep feeling like I hear him so yeah that's been my past couple of days okay but other than that um I'll be okay, you know, I will definitely be okay in time, but I will tell you this, no animal, no dog will ever replace him, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person that feels that way, but, about their pet, but there's no way that you could replace him. I don't know what was wrong with him, um, there wasn't anything wrong as far as I'm concerned, but you know what, I do want to say this, thank you everyone who has been reaching out to me and, and, and leaving their condolences and prayers for my family, you know what I'm saying, because he's a family member too, some people be, may be like, well that's just a dog, that might just be a dog, because I, I might just be a human being, but he was loved, and he loved us, so he was part of our family, regardless if he had four legs, he was he was something. He was a person. He was he he was a living thing. Like I'm a living thing. He was a living soul. He was living. He was a living being. I'm a living being. Same thing. So you know what I'm saying. He loved me as much as I loved him. So it's hard. And but I do appreciate everybody. Like you know, leaving their comments on my Instagram and Facebook. You know, just wishing us well and you know, saying you know their condolences and prayers. But the one thing, like out of all the comments I had, I had probably like about. Probably like a 200 something comments on Instagram and I don't even know about how many on Facebook and on Twitter. But anyway, so here's my thing. Out of all those comments, only one motherfucking person could be so nosy. Like, I'm sorry, but maybe I'm just this type of person. But like, if you write that someone has passed, it doesn't matter if it's a dog, a cat, a person. You know, you're just saying, you know, this person has passed and I, I love them and they passed away. You, you just say sorry and my condolences. You don't be like, oh, I'm sorry about your loss. What happened? So I ignore their fucking message, all right, on Facebook, and then I go to Instagram. You leave that on my Instagram page about you're sorry for my loss, but you also DM me and be like, I'm sorry for your loss. What happened? Now I got to go off on you, and I'll be like, he passed away. That's what happened. Why do you keep asking me that if I didn't answer you already? So what does she do? And... If you're watching, you know who the fuck I'm talking about because me and you were friends, like somewhat. But listen, <sighs> um, she writes back, oh, wow, um, April, sorry, never mind. But um, oh, wow, sorry, April, never mind. 
And I was like, I just basically, I was like, oh, wow. She was like, but that's how people, um, they, that's how people show their condolences is asking what happened instead of saying nothing. No, bitch. That's not how fucking people show their condolences of asking how did the person die or, uh, or a living being die in your life. You already going through some grievances that fucking day. You going to ask me what the fuck happened? Like if I didn't answer you one motherfucking time, what makes you think I'm going to answer you now? Now I feel like you reaching and you being extra nosy. Okay. So I had to like, yeah, it's one thing to be concerned, but you don't have to keep being in my business. Or you don't have to keep asking. I think it's rude, especially at these time at this time. Like, I, I thought it was rude. You know what I'm saying? Like, if somebody told me that their mother or somebody in their family died, regardless, because Coco was in my family, died, I'm not, I'm going to say, I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Do you need anything? I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm so sorry. What happened? Like, I just think that's heartless. And I just think that's a form of being fucking nosy. But you know what I'm saying? To each his own. People are, you know, out of all those motherfucking comments, I only got that one person that asked me what happened. Not once, but fucking twice. And I'm like, God damn, she's really motherfucking reaching. And so then she writes me back after I go off. She's like, well, I understand you're upset. But once again, I'm sorry. Like, okay, first of all, bitch, I am upset. But second of all, even if it was a week or two or three later, okay, or a year later, I would have still came at you like that because it's none of your motherfucking business. He passed the fuck away. What does the key word mean? What happened? I already explained that. It has nothing to do with being upset. It has to do with fucking having some type of etiquette. Stop being so motherfucking nosy. Anyway... Other than that, I am upset. I fucking am upset. What am I supposed to be, happy? No, I'm not. And that's one reason why I'm like not even too concerned about Thanksgiving because on Thanksgiving, I made the turkey neck and I gave it to him and I made the giblets in it and I sauteed it up and gave it to him and he loved it. So now what do I do? I mean, I would definitely give sugar some, but she don't need no little fat stuff. But yeah, she's been in around me. But anyway, we're gonna. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get past this moment. I'm gonna get past all of this, and in time, I will be okay. And so, for right now, what we're gonna do is we're going to spend no more time on this because I don't want to cry anymore. I just want to remember my dog with all the happy memories that I have, and I appreciate everybody for looking out for me. Now, on to the real talk. If you have a real talk that you need to, you know, get in depth about, you want me to get, you know, talk about on um, on here, then you could definitely send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. If you want to go ahead and put in the real talk that the names have changed, like, you know, if your name is April, but you don't want nobody to know that, you could let me know that you changed the names to the real talk. But other than that, let's get into this real talk, you guys. All right. Okay, you guys, you know how you just... Okay, I love when people send me pictures, and then I just clicked on this young lady's picture that she sent me, her email. She sent me one of her and one of her son, and I just, as soon as I clicked it open, I just started cheesing because he's just like the cutest little thing. He's like this milk chocolate color, and he's just riding on his Batman bike, and he's just so freaking cute. And he's just got this smile on his face. Like, I don't know. I think sometimes things are meant for you to just see at that particular moment, but it was like he was smiling at me. And it was just like, April, just smile, just cheer up, like serious. And then I see her picture and she's just so pretty and stuff. She's really pretty. Wow. And she's like a milk chocolate too. So pretty. Okay, so here we go with this email, you guys, so that we can get into this. And I'm going to get through this, all right? Hey, April, please keep my name private. Call me Bella. Hope you and your beautiful family are well. Just need to tell you how inspirational you are. You're a great mother and source of strength. Well done, girl. All of us mothers know how hard it can be. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? Anyway, on to the real talk. So I've messaged you before about my issue, but I'm just confused and wondering if there is a way forward. My ex and I broke up in May and we have a three-year-old. We started working on things again in September. So we've been working on things for about three months now. 
But while we were broken up for about four months, he started seeing the girl who he cheated on me with. While he was seeing her, he told me he wanted to see how things went with her. So I thought we was over. He also had sex with two other girls. I wanted to get over him and I was heartbroken. So I got his name tattoo covered up and I started seeing someone else who I also slept with. This was the first time I slept with another man since my ex and I started seeing each other six years ago. He says he is a man so he can have casual sex, but I am a mother so I shouldn't be acting that way. Long story short, he can't get over the fact that I was with someone else when we broke up. He asked me how long we had sex for, what photos I sent him, what we spoke about, how many times I've seen him, every single detail my ex needs to know. When I think we finished talking about it, he brings it up again and pulls us back. I'm just sad and regret sleeping with someone else during the breakup. I honestly thought me and my ex were finished, but he came back and now he says he doesn't recognize me and I'm not who he thought I was. He's called me a hoe. Honestly, I wasn't upfront because I didn't want him to think badly of me. So diva, I'm confused and I feel bad about sleeping with someone else during the breakup. Please give me some real talk blessings. Please give me some real talk blessings to you. Belle. Okay, first of all, the main fucking focus of this whole email was it was a breakup, okay? So, Belle was with her man. They got a three-year-old son. They've been together for six years, okay? Did this nigga cheat on her, and then they broke up, and then when they broke up, he went to be with the girl he cheated on Belle with. On top of that, he told Belle, I just want to see how it goes with this girl. Meaning, basically, he said, I just want to see how it goes with the girl that I cheated on you with. If me and her could make, could get it, could, you know what I'm saying? If we could get it popping. So, from hearing that, Belle thought that she and her boyfriend of six years was broken up. It was over. There was nothing else. And on top of that, he just slept with two other bitches. Let me tell you something. I wouldn't give a fuck if he slept with five other bitches. If you cheated on me and then you had the nerve to tell me, well, I just want to see how it could work out with me and the girl that I cheated on you with, nigga, you wouldn't even have no fucking teeth left in your mouth to speak, let alone a tongue, because I probably would have took that shit out your mouth and wrapped it the fuck around your neck. Who the fuck in their right mind says some shit like that to some female that they've been with for six years, talking about, well, I want to just see how it goes with the girl that I cheated on you with? Like, dude, are you serious right now? I wish a motherfucker would say some shit like that to me. No, I don't. Because if you was to say some shit like that to me, a bitch like me would probably be back in fucking jail where I was at the last time for some dumb shit. I'm not about to hear no shit like that. If you were to say some shit like that to me and we've been together for six years, trust and believe, nigga, you don't have to see how it goes with her. I hope it goes well because if it doesn't, you better find a new bitch to go on to move on to the next because you're not coming back this way. So here's the thing. She thought it was over between them. He didn't slept with two other bitches besides the one that he didn't cheat on with. So Belle was like, okay, well, it's over between us. I'm going to go cover his name up with a new tattoo. Okay. Facts. And on top of that, I'm going to go see meet other people. Facts. Truth. Okay. Because that's what the fuck you do. You move you move forward. Why the fuck you going to sit around and hover over some fucking feelings for a nigga that don't really give a fuck about you? If this dude really gave two fucks about you, then he would have never came out his face and said, I want to see how it goes with the girl that I cheated on you with. Like, okay, did you really just say that to me? Like, and I'm just going to, you know, I'm, I'm, I am I'm, really want to verify that's what she said to me because I'm saying we started working on things again in September. So we were working on things for about three months. But while we was broken up about four months, he started seeing the girl. Yeah, while we was broken up for four months, he started seeing the girl who he cheated on me with. While he was seeing her, he told me he wanted to see how things went with her. So I thought we were over. He also had sex with two other girls. So, okay, I'm not bugging out. He said, well, I'm going to see how things go with her. Nigga, if you say that shit to me, you don't ever have to call me again in life unless you're coming to get your son, drop something the fuck off for your son, or are we going to court for your son? Other than that, I don't even want to hear from you any fucking more, okay? Like, so... Yeah, you move on. Like she said, I thought we had moved on. You know, we wasn't no more me and him. I'm going to move forward. I'm going I'm to meet people. And that's what she's supposed to have done did. Because I would have thought that it was over between us two. If For one, you already cheated on me. But now the bitch you cheated on me with, you want to see how it goes with her? So you really want to fucks with her? Say no more, dude. 
say no motherfucking more. I'm good. I'm motherfucking good. Okay? Well, now this nigga and her done got back together. She done met herself somebody, and she done slept with the dude. Oh, fucking well. Look, oh, well. Um, we're going to call her boyfriend, um, huh, we're going to call him, we're going to call him, we're just going to call him Terrence. Terrence is a good name, right? Because Terrence and Belle, that sounds cute. So, okay, so, Belle and Terrence ain't together no more. Terrence with the with old girl that he done cheated on Belle with, okay? And whoever other two bitches he done fucked. Belle found herself somebody new. You know, she, she ain't shacking up with him, but they getting to know each other. They done went out. They talk on the phone. They text. You know what I'm saying? They done had sex once or who knows how many times, but that's not my business because I could care less. But the whole point is she done moved forward and moved on, okay? So good for her because that's what the fucks we do. Now, why they get back together, Terrence and Belle get back together. Okay, that's cool, too. You want to work it out because y'all is a couple. Y'all got a kid together. Okay, that's cool. Shit happens. Sometimes we have issues in our relationship, and that's what the fuck happens sometimes. Hey, I'm going to be the first to vouch for that. I done, got a, I done covered up my husband's tattoo, and I done got a divorce from him. Okay? And then we get back together. And, oh, excuse me. Excuse me. I didn't got a divorce from him. And then I met someone else. And then we get back together. Okay. Shit happens like that. And do I regret getting divorced? Of course I do. Because I love him with all my heart. But the part of me that got divorced was the bitter part and the angry part. Okay. The angry part that the shit that we went through. So I guess I was entitled to that. All right. What you want? So, huh? What you want? So... They get back together. That's cool. Now, Bill already know that Terrence, for a fact, was fucking with old girl that he was cheating on her with and some other bitches. Terrence then found out from Belle probably that she met somebody and they had conversations and they went out and did stuff and they did things that men and women do, which is have sex. The nigga is fucking asking her questions like he's the motherfucking Jim Carrey pet detective asshole. Question her about how long they've been on the phone for, what type of pictures they done sent, how long they had sex for, probably how big his dick is, did she like it? Because I'm pretty sure he asked more than those three questions that she put in that email. Because I know dudes, and that's what the fuck they do. Like, I don't know them, but let me tell you something. The one that I got rid of, you know, that corny ass fat motherfucker that was like this little bit of dick and didn't last the one who was living in my house and I was been tired of him. I told y'all after two weeks that he came here, he would ask the same fucking kind of questions like, but who are you to be asking me about my husband's dick size? And I would just be like, why did you ask me and try to like not even answer the question? And he keep on and I'm like, um, what does it matter to you? If I'm not trying to answer you, that means that dude. You ain't packing, okay? <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? And questions like, I just would never answer them because I don't think that's your motherfucking business to be asking me, okay? That's not your business. Unless you want dude, okay? What you motherfucking gay, but we already know. I think I done told y'all. I think he kind of fruity. Always talking with his finger up. Plus, I done found him talking to men on fucking Facebook Messenger and it wasn't conversations that you and I would have, girls, okay? So anyway, yes. Anyway, now they back together. He done found out, Terrence done found out that Belle got, you know what I'm saying, had her peace or whatever. He's asking all these fucking questions. First of all, dude, you 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 done told her that you was going to be with old girl that she done cheated on you with. And you had two other bitches. How the fuck you going to sit up here and ask her all these questions? And then on top of that, did he said he she's not the same person anymore. He doesn't recognize her and she's a hoe. So did this fucking scandalous ass grimy trifling fucking dick nigga call Belle a hoe? Let me tell you something, girlfriend. Let me tell you something. I I know you did say um, you know, he, and he said he's a man, so he can have casual sex. But as a mother, she shouldn't be acting that way. So you're a man and a father, and you think it's okay to go around and fuck bitches and cheat. But because she's a mother, she has to carry herself like she's motherfucking Queen Elizabeth and Holy Mary. Okay, but it's okay for you to act like a whoremonger. So the motherfucker 
who says some shit like this is a male chauvinist pig, all right? And why the fuck would you even want to deal with him anymore, Belle? Let me tell you something. You said, honestly, I wasn't upfront because I didn't want him to think badly of me. Um, first of all, I wouldn't have even told him none of my business. But second of all, if I did, I'm not about to let that nigga sit there and call me no motherfucking hoe, okay? First, let's not fucking be calling people names out the fucking good book, all right? Because don't be sitting up here calling somebody a hoe when nigga, you is just trifling and you got a dirty fucking dick. Yes, dirty dick trifling ass nigga, okay? That's what the fuck he is. He's a dirty dick trifling ass nigga, okay? Or ninja. You want to tell somebody. So I guess for all of us women that have men in our lives, we should just accept the fact that he's a man and it's okay for him to have casual sex. What the fuck is casual sex? Okay. Can somebody please tell me what, what the fuck is cat? I'm writing this down because I'm trying to find a good t title. What the fuck is casual sex? Okay. Because I need to fucking know this. Um, it, let me let me google the shit and find out what the fuck is casual sex so that way we me and you guys will know what the fuck casual sex is casual sex according to wikipedia casual sex is sexual activity that takes place outside a romantic relationship and implies an absence of commitment emotional attachment or familiarity between sexual partners okay so if you guys didn't hear her she said casual sex is sexual activity that takes places outside a romantic relationship and implies an absence of commitment emotional attachment or familiarity between sexual partners. This is what Wikipedia says, okay? So, okay, so it's, it's really such a thing? Okay, so, and then it says, rules for casual sex. Ask men. Ask, ask men. Rules for casual sex, all right? We, let, let's get into this. The rules for casual sex. Five pro tips for pulling off a casual hookup like a champ. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Women like women like having casual sex just as much as men do. In fact, they seek it out actively, not only in bars and online dating, but on hookup sites dedicated to the art of fa facilitating no strings attached love making as well. The things that keep us from doing it more often. Okay. Rules you say aren't those for relationships. Casual sex is supposed to be exciting and fun and not have a laundry list of perimeters to follow, right? Bring condoms is one. Okay, be present, as in don't have one eye on her and one on your phone, okay? Uh, stock up on lubrication, all right? Four, make sure you have her enthusiastic con consist constant con con consent. Make sure you have her enthusiastic consent, um, meaning getting a clear yes, not only on the sex you're having, but a yes on each new act that the two of you take part in throughout the duration of the hookup. And five, be upfront about what it is that you want and what this is going on right now. Okay. So there is some casual sex rules. I did not know this. Okay. Because I don't go around having casual sex, but I did not know that such a thing existed. However, let me just motherfucking tell y'all this. Okay. When you in a goddamn relationship, there's no fucking such thing as casual fucking sex. Okay. You have sex with the person that you fucking with. Not casual motherfucking sex. Like, so you think, so us ladies here that are, ha that are in relationships, okay? So it's okay for our men to go out and have casual sex with some bitch that he don't know and he don't really want to hook up but just to get some pussy. That's okay. Because, and then he's supposed to say, well, I'm a man. I can have casual sex. No, nigga, you going to be a man without a dick. You won't have no type of sex no more. So how you feel about that? Let me tell you something, Belle. First of all, your man Terrence is a fucking male chauvinist pig and he has a lot of fucking nerve to be coming around you talking about that's not what mothers do and that you're a woman and it's okay for men to do that. And on top of that, he says you're 
you're not the same person anymore and he doesn't recognize you and you're a hoe, let me tell you something, sweetheart. Your six years with him is well overdue and out fucking lived. Meaning, sweetheart, move the fuck on like you were doing, okay? For one, the one thing you went wrong with is you took him back when he told you, well, I'm cheating on you with her and I just want to see how it goes with her. That right there alone would have let me know for a fact that I ain't shit to you. You don't give a fuck about me nor our three-year-old son. And for that, I'm not going to fuck with you no more. If a man cheats on you and then he leaves you and his child and tells you the reason why he's leaving you, then it's time for you to pack your fucking heart bags up, meaning Pick your heart up off the sofa and wherever else the fuck you left it in an apartment or with him. Pack it the fuck up in your duffel bag and take it the fuck with you and move forward, okay? Because that's when you know niggas ain't shit or bitches ain't shit. And they have no concern about your well-being or your heart or your feelings. I wish a mother... No, I, like I said, I don't wish a motherfucker would. Because if some motherfucker body, meaning my husband, cheated on me... And then told me he wants to see how it works out with the girl. <laughs> he wouldn't have no lips left, okay? Let my husband tell me some shit like that, that he cheated on me. I mean, yeah, he cheated on me before. And he got caught. And he knew not to fucking ever do that shit the fuck again. Because he know what time it is. A bitch get crazy. Y'all think I'm crazy on here? Picture me rolling, okay? Like they say, picture me rolling. He know I almost ran his motherfucking ass off. And I caught my husband. Like, he told me he was going to his friend's house. And I asked him where the, the light bill was at. The light bill money was at. And he told me to hold on. And he picked up another phone. His friend's phone his friend's house phone, the bitch called him on his friend's house phone and he didn't know I could hear his whole motherfucking conversation. So I was like, he told me where the light bill money was at. I was like, all right, cool. Well, let me tell y'all something. I'm the one that dropped his ass the fuck off and it was a one way street. The time I had a big ass truck then too. So I was like, oh, I heard this nigga talking to some bitch talk about, he was talking shit about me too, because we had just gotten to an argument and he was telling her that I was getting on his nerves and how he over here on, um, I forget what the name of that street was, but he, it's a one way. So there was no way for him to get the fuck out. Okay. He couldn't go the other way. So I'm going to just park right here. And she was basically, he was like, well, come get me. Well, where I dropped him off at wasn't too far from my house. It was probably like, um, like a five minute drive. A bitch hurried up and got there. So I hurried up and got there and I parked at the corner, right at the corner. She had to come up the street. My mouth was so dry for my medicine. So I sat there in my truck for probably like 15 minutes. Here they come. I see her in this little fucking hatchback. This little motherfucking hatchback, okay? This big bitch. Magilla Gorilla bitch. With this fake ass, fake ass, fake ass synthetic ponytail. A fake ass, fake ass fucking bitch from his job at the hospital. Her name is Stephanie. Big ass gorilla looking bitch. They drive by me. You know, he's on the passenger side. All you see is the fucking hear the tire screeching and this big ass truck right behind them. I can see you guys in there. They trying to get the fuck away from me. What? You know what I did? I drove up on somebody's fucking lawn and cut their asses right the fuck off. This nigga jumps out the fucking car and takes off, running into the hospital emergency room exit entrance because that's by the time I caught them, they was right there. And I'm trying to grab this bitch from the window because it's rolled down. She starts rolling it up, not pushing the button to get the fuck up. This bitch is rolling it the fuck up and locks her door. That's all right, bitch, because I'm going to deal with him. I chased his ass through there. He took off. That's fine. Let me tell you something. An ass 
that's I do house calls, bitches. You want to fuck with my husband? You knew that was my motherfucking husband, okay? We weren't even married at the time, but we've been together for many years. You knew that was my man because I'm always at the job. You smiling up at my face saying hello. You knew that shit, bitch. All right, cool. What I do? Me and my homegirl, Chrissy, we go. We making house visits, okay? We making motherfucking house visits. And on top of that, I'm pregnant. I think I, I was pregnant. I was pregnant with Nay. We make the house visits to this motherfucking bitch's house, okay? I took all his shit and threw it all out on the fucking lawn. All of his shit. And on top of that, did this nigga come to my house the next fucking day to come get his shit in that fucking little raggedy ass hatchback? You know what a bitch like me did? Because I've seen it had a beer. I called the police on his ass. And her motherfucking car was towed. And his ass was escorted off to jail for drinking with an open container. Okay? And who did he try to get a call to get him out of jail? Me. And I said, I don't give a fuck if her car is towed. And I don't give a fuck about you either. Click. And I didn't speak to him for like a while after that. Uh, maybe I wasn't even pregnant. No, I don't even think I was pregnant then. But either way, that's the shit. He never tried that shit again, okay? Never. So when a nigga tell you that he want to see how it go, where did shit go? Probably in my closet. He want to see, where did she go? He want to see how it go with the bitch that he didn't cheat on you with. Bitch, get, dust his ass off like some fucking dust on the counter and get rid of him like some crumbs. Dust him off like some crumbs on the counter, sweep it in the garbage, and be done with him. He is not even worth your time. First of all, he didn't disrespect it and told you that's what men do by having casual sex. Second of all, he didn't disrespect it by cheating on you and telling you he want to be with the girl. I don't even know why y'all got back together. You really think this nigga is going to be faithful? He's a male chauvinist pig. I wouldn't even trust him to be around me or my kid, let alone my fucking fish. If I had any. Send him about his business. Off with his head. Tell that nigga bend at the knees. Okay? Nigga, bend the motherfucking knee. Meaning, get on your knees, bitch, and ask for forgiveness. But still, other than that, I'm still not fucking with you. Bend the motherfucking knee. Okay? Sweetheart, Belle, you wasting your time. What, what are you confused about? The part that you're confused is the, the fact that you let this nigga back in your life. And now you're trying to take the blame like, you know, I'm confused and I feel bad about sleeping with someone else during the breakup. Bitch, the main key focus is the breakup. Why would you feel sad and bad about sleeping with somebody else during the breakup? This nigga done slept with not one bitch, but multiple ones. He slept with a bitch while y'all was together, while y'all was on the break unbreakup, okay? While y'all was on the unbreakup, this nigga was sleeping with bitches. We know this because he cheated on you with I'm pretty sure he got some pussy from the bitch because if he didn't, he wouldn't have told you. Let me see how this works out with this bitch. Because why would you get rid of some pussy that you've been had and you know it's good to get to get with somebody that you don't even know how it is? Could be funky or whatever. He was fucking on you while you were with him. And you feel bad? No, sweetheart. You should feel stupid. Okay? You should feel stupid. That's that, and I'm not trying to be mean, and I'm not trying to dish you, but you should feel stupid to even feel bad. You should feel stupid to feel guilty. You should feel stupid to even allow this nigga to say to you, I want to see how well it goes with the next girl. Because you should just feel stupid. Don't never let no nigga walk all over you, because that's what the fuck he's doing. And he's trying to play you, okay? He's trying to have his cake and eat it the fuck too. And let me tell you something, sweetheart. As long as you allow him to do this, he will continue. You have a son with him. Do you think that it's okay for your son to grow up and think that it's okay to be in a relationship with a woman and have casual sex because he's a man? You know what I'm saying? Who teaches any? Who says that? From what I just read about casual sex, you shouldn't even be in a relationship. I mean, it says be in a relationship, but that's just fucking doggish. I don't know what wrong, what's wrong with the world today and what's wrong with people today, but it seems like they have their heads on their shoulders in the wrong areas. More or less, they have their heads stuck up their asses, and all the people seem to think about is themselves, and they don't care about, you know, people in general, about how what you do may affect other people. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't see how it affects you. Sweetheart, your time and your relationship with him is well over. It is, is lived 
its course. It's ran its fucking course. And that's what happens sometimes in life. Especially when you have somebody who's so just like uncaring like that. Like your time with him is over. It's time to leave Terrence ass alone and let them bitches have him. So I guess because it didn't work out well with the bitch he cheated on you with, it's time to go back to you. Girl, please, you just, so what are you, like, you're just on standby for him? So you just sit on the sidelines, you know, like, when Terrence calls and beckons, I'll just come and run him. Girl, bye. Figure that shit out, because you already told you what the fuck to do. Now let these females tell you what the fuck to do. Would y'all fucking, if somebody asked, if, if you ladies answer this question in the comments for me, please. If you was with a man for X, Y, Z amount of years, and you found out he was cheating on you, and then he told you, well, I just want to see how this goes with the other girl that I cheated on you with. What would you do? Can you please tell me what you would do? Would you take him back or would you not? Please just tell me in general, what would you do? How would that make you feel? I need to know this in the comments because I'm really, I really need to know this. Like I'm so like in, 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 intrigued by it. I need to know what would you guys do? So please, or even if a man is watching and a female told you that, please, can you just tell me what would you do? Like, you know, what would you do? Where'd you go? Huh? What would you do? So let's move on to the next real talk. Where'd you go? Okay, so this one here is like, I am loving these pictures, you guys. Seriously, I am loving these pictures. Oh, I didn't even see this one. You know what? This young lady is a very lucky young lady. Okay. Okay. Hey, April, I appreciate you taking the time to read this this it is long but i'm going to dive in i changed all the names just fyi okay so you can call me cat and to just give you some history on me i am an african american and i'm 25 years old and engaged due to be married next june my husband's name is jacob and he is the love of my life i was adopted by a caucasian family who are my world however i will point out right now that color isn't a thing to me but in order for you to understand the moral of the story i'm going to point out race a bit and the word real means my family that raised me okay so when she says real that means her adopted family that's her family that raised her now about three years ago my real mom aka the mom that raised me helped me reach out to my biological mother I was really excited once I was able to contact her and go to meet her six months later. It was really wonderful to meet my three biological sisters and their kids too. However, this year I almost felt like I left them in my life. I let them, however, excuse me, however, this year, however, this year I almost feel like I let them in my life too fast. So three years ago is when Kat met her biological mother and biological sisters. So she's 25 years old, so she was, what, 22, okay? And she feels as though she has let her biological family in her life a little bit too fast. I recently went to my biological family's bar big barbecue, and my fiancé, Jacob, who is also Caucasian, went with me. I am not going to lie. I was pretty nervous, and so was he. When we went there was a serious disconnect, and I saw some true colors. But bless Jacob's heart, he stayed positive and outgoing the whole time despite everything. Not to mention he is a total introvert and out of his comfort zone. So he's, he's like me. The issues that came to light is how judgmental my biological family is and how they are so quick to say something, especially my biological mother's husband. Making everything a black and white issue, which pissed me off because one, I am marrying Jacob and two, I do not allow racial shit to affect me. Do I notice it? Yes, especially living in a place with mostly Caucasians. But I more look at things as that particular individual and how they act as a person, not by the color of their skin. I couldn't help but be irritated by their comments, but I let it go because they look at things differently than I do. However, the situation that I'm dealing with is a while back, we decided to give my biological mom's husband the honor to officiate our wedding. We made a huge mistake by asking him that night after the barbecue, because as soon as I left the room, he told Jacob how he is looking forward to bringing black and white together. What the fuck? It is not about that. It's about bringing Kat and Jacob together, not fucking because of our color. Back up really quick. So my biological mom and her husband came to my hometown to visit back in 2016. 
And unfortunately, my real father had to miss their visit due to an emergency with my real sister, meaning her, her family that raised her. Even though I was bummed, he needed to be with my real sister more. And he will get to meet my biological mother and her husband some other time. Anyways, back to the story and point. My fucking biological mom's husband had the nerve to tell my fiance, Jacob, that he thinks my real dad has a problem with them and that he is racist and making assumptions about my father. Oh, hell to the fucking no. You are not about to talk shit about my real father who you never even met and make up some shit about what type of person my real dad is. You are talking about the man that raised me. My dad and I are really close. Anyways, I am really proud of Jacob because he stuck up for my real dad and told my biological mo mom's husband off. One last thing before I conclude this. I am having a super small wedding and I'm only inviting people I am close with. So I am inviting my bi biological mom and to be respectful, her husband can come. She got a lot of periods after that. Who will not marry Jacob and I. Thank you, girl. However, I am not going to invite my biological sisters because I never talked to them and we are not close. I did talk to my biological mom about this and she kind of gets it. Although she had to bring up the fact that I need to know my black roots better and almost made me feel like my Caucasian family that raised me isn't shit because my biological family is my real family. I am struggling because my real family is my roots. And they made me the person I am today, regardless of race, because it didn't, it didn't exist in my household. Also, my family was always very open about my African heritage and never sheltered me from that. I love my real family to the moon, and they are irreplaceable in my eyes, heart, and soul. Not to mention my family and I are very close. I got three questions out of all of this. One, am I overreacting? Two, how do I tell my biological mom I don't want her husband to marry us? And three, do I need to put my biological family in check and make them understand their place in my life? Thank you, April. Again, I am sorry this is long, but I feel I needed to explain all this so you can understand better what's going on. This, There are some pics of me and my fiance and some of my real family. There ain't none of her biological family in here. And her and her husband, Jacob, or her soon-to-be husband, Jacob, they look so freaking cute. He on his little plaid shirt and jeans, and she got on her little sweater, and he's giving her a piggyback right? They look so cute. Oh, they, oh these are professional pictures. Nettie Joy Photography. Oh. Okay, girl, Cat. So first of all, let me tell you something. You guys already heard the story. Cat is 25 years old. She has been adopted since a baby by a Caucasian family, and they have treated her good, and they have raised her good. They have given her values, morals. They have taught her about her black heritage. They have never sheltered her from that. Her and her biological family have never been close until, not even close. She met them back in 2016. Okay, so, or three years ago, right, right? I think that she, um, either way, she just recently met them. So, here's the thing. Her and her fiancé, Jacob, Kat and Jacob go to her biological family's barbecue after she done met them and spoke to them. And everything is about race, you know what I'm saying? Race this, race that, because this is a black family, so it's, it's racist, um, race this, race this. Not because it's a black family, but I'm just telling you, in case you forget, she's adopted. Kat has adopted her biological family is black, but she's an African-American. And her real family, which is the one that raised and adopted her, are white. They're Caucasian. But anyway, for one, when you went to the barbecue and you felt some type of way, um, Kat, you felt like you was out of place, kind of. You know, I get that you felt kind of like you were out of place. You kept hearing your biological family members speak about a black and white issues and made you feel uncomfortable and also made Jacob feel uncomfortable. Now, if you felt uncomfortable about it and you really kind of just met them, your biological mom's husband has no relationship to you. Why would you want him to marry you and your soon-to-be husband off? Why would you want him to do that? You know what I mean? He is no kin. He is no relation to you at all, okay? He is your mom's, your biological mom's husband. He is nothing to you. So from that, I would have never asked him to marry me and Jacob off. And especially because we just met each other. And I don't even like the way that you're speaking. You're making me feel uncomfortable. You're making my fiance feel uncomfortable. So with that, 
how would you tell them that you don't want him to marry you off? You just be point blank. You, there's, you know what? You don't have to shelter your feelings for them. That's, that might be your biological mom, but in reality, she's really not your mom. She was the person that gave birth to you. She also gave you up for adoption, so she wasn't there. So you really don't owe her anything, okay? You don't own her, owe her anything, okay? And definitely you don't owe her husband a damn thing either. You don't owe either one of them an explanation as to why you don't want him marrying you off or to why you don't even want to invite them if you don't want to invite them. Now, your real father, who you're really close with, I'm pretty sure that he would feel kind of heartbroken to find out that some some lame because I'm going to just call him a lame some some brand new person, because he's kind of brand new. Your biological mom's husband is kind of like brand new in your life, just as well as your biological mom is, is marrying his daughter off. You know what I'm saying? You are his daughter. Regardless if you're adopted or not, you hold a special portion of their heart, okay? You hold a part of their heart. You are their family. You are their daughter. It doesn't matter if it's by paperwork. You are still their daughter. And why would he want you to be married off by anybody else. They've raised you. They've raised you to become the young lady that you are. And from the looks of your pictures, you guys seem very happy. Everybody in the picture. I don't I like that's what, like with me. I don't care about what color you are. As long as we're family and we get along, we're good and that's good. However, I would just tell Jake, um, I would just tell my mom, my biological mom, or my egg donor, my egg donor, listen. I was wrong about asking your husband to marry me off. Um, I'm not really sure why I did that. You know, maybe I felt the moment was nice because we kind of was connecting. But in reality, I'm going to have my real father marry me and my fiance off because that is my family. That's who raised me. And those are the family members that love me. And I would just tell her like that. Be blunt. And as far as your mom being invited, I mean, that's cool if you want to invite her. You can uninvite her if you want to. It doesn't matter. You don't owe her an explanation. You don't owe her an explanation as to why you don't want her husband to marry you off. You don't owe her anything. And for two, um, your other question, um, are you overreacting? No, you're not overreacting because I don't understand why people are always making a big thing out of race. What does it matter what color the person is that you like or you love? What the fuck does it matter? Not everything has to be a racial issue. There is so much more in life to worry about than what color is what because when you rip off the skin, we are still the same people in, inside. Whether you ignorant and asshole or fucking mean and devilish, you still going to be that person regardless of what color your skin is. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't think you're overreacting. Me personally, I would have went the fuck off. Um, I, I probably would have went off at the barbecue or, or, or better yet, I would have just probably left because I'm not about to sit around somewhere and feel un, uninvited and uncomfortable. And, you know what I'm saying? In a situation like that. Like that, she's just your biological mom. I, I really honestly don't feel like you owe her any type of explanation of any sort. Um. And do you need to put your biological family in check and make them understand their place in your life? Well, you know something? The check that you have to put her in really don't have to be that hard of a check. All you got to basically tell her is like, listen, I appreciate and I'm glad that we got to know one another and that I, I have been able to meet you and to see where I came from. I said, but I need you to understand that this is my family and this is who has raised me and you know, you'll always be my biological mom, but in reality, this is my family. You, you, you know what? You, you, all you have to do basically is explain yourself and explain where you are in your life, okay? And that's the checkpoint that you can put them in. You ain't got to go off. You ain't got to tell her about herself. You could just basically let her know, like, listen, this is my family right here. And I understand that you are my biological mom, but this is my family, and this is who has raised me. And I owe everything to them. The respect and the love that they have given me over the years is unconditional. And that's all you got to say. Now, if you want me, you can speak from time to time, but you don't have to, you don't owe this lady an explanation. You don't owe her anything. You can cut ties if you want to with her. You know, I'm, I'm glad that you were able to meet her, but because we all, if, if we were all, if we were adopted, if I were adopted, I would probably want to know who my biological mom was. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not really sure. I can't really tell you if I was, you know what I'm saying? I know that if I was happy where who I was, I probably wouldn't. But then again, you know what? There's probably a part of me that anybody that's um, been adopted that wants to meet their biological parent and maybe ask them why, why. And then 
I mean, then again, it would probably hurt me because now you got other kids, but you gave me up for adoption. So I probably would feel some type of way. But in all reality, I don't really think that you owe them any type of explanation as to why you don't want her husband to marry you off. I just honestly think that you should never have asked him in the have, have, you should have never asked him in the first place. When I read that portion in the email, I was kind of shocked because you already given me details about how uncomfortable you guys were at this barbecue and that they were making black and white issues. And also the fact that you kind of like just met him and he is no kin to you. I would have never asked him to marry us all, especially because of the way you feel about your real dad and your real mom and your real siblings. That right there would be kind of like a stab in the heart to your real dad that's raised you and is close to you to let this total stranger, because he's a fucking total stranger. Your mom's husband is a total stranger. You didn't say my mom's husband, who is my biological father, my mom's husband. He's a, he's a total stranger. They have no rights and they did not earn any rights to marry you off at your wedding. The only thing that you could give them is a back fucking row seat to your wedding. That's it. Them motherfuckers wouldn't even get front row seats because that is for your family and your immediate family. And I know some people may feel like, well, that's not right. That's not right. But in my eyes, I think it's right because you know what? That's her family. They're the one that raised her and took care of her since day one. You know what I mean? And been there and then taught her everything she knows. And from them pictures, she real happy with them. Okay? Real fucking happy with them. Now, granted, that's her biological mom. She the one who brought her into the world. But that's all the fuck you did was bring her into the world. I don't know what your circumstances was, boo. Or your mom's circumstances, rather, was back then. And that's, that's neither here nor there. But the fact is, she gave you up for adoption. You had a family that took good care of you and is still taking care of you. And they love you unconditionally. Now you got this lady who's your biological mom who's a racist fucking pig. Why is everything got to be a black and white issue? You know something? I can't stand when people are like that. Um, when they see that one of their family members is, is dating outside of the race because that's what they call it. You're dating outside of the race. What the fuck is dating outside of the race? Like, I'm just trying to figure this the fuck out. Dating outside of the race. Okay, so I'm dating outside of the race. Is there a motherfucking rule book to dating? I mean, people have their preferences. Like, I like this and I like that and I think this is attractive. But it doesn't matter what the skin color is because you can get yourself a real nice looking black man. She could have got a real nice looking black man who's a total asshole. Okay. And she got this nice Caucasian looking white man who's a total gentleman and loves the ground that she work, walks on. Okay. Worships the ground that she walks on. I'm just saying. That's my point of view. So no, you're not overreacting. The only part that I thought you kind of overreacted was when you jumped into the flames. You jumped to the fire, girl, when you asked your mom, your biological mother's husband to marry you all. That's where I thought you kind of overreacted. But I get it. You were probably so excited and happy to finally get to meet her that some shit happens sometimes like that. You know, I've been so happy to meet people or do things for people and I blatantly offered them something and then I turn around and it's like, why the fuck I tell that bitch she can come stay with us until she get her own apartment? All right? You know, I'm not saying that's what happened, but you understand what I'm saying. You, you, you're so excited and you're happy to meet the person or whatever that you offer something that you really wasn't thinking straight with. And that's what it was. Shit, you could just tell her that. Shit, um, I'm sorry, um, Dottie, whatever her fucking name is, biological mom, Dottie. But I'm going to have to let you, I'm going to have to tell you, um, I'm going to have my real father give me away for my wedding. He's the one that's going to marry me off. He's my real father and he's been there, so... You can let your husband, biological mom, daddy, know that I will not be needing his services. I don't even want his ass there. Because it seemed like he tried to start some, some bullshit when her biological mom and her biological mom's husband came over to her home to visit. Her real dad wasn't there. He was somewhere with her sister because she wasn't feeling well. Um, I don't know. I, I don't really think I would even invite them to my home after all that. But he tried to start some shit talking about the father don't like him because he's a racist. You never even got to meet her real father. Um, biological stepdad. We're going to call him biological stepdad because that's biological mom's husband. Biological stepdad, you didn't even get to meet her real father. How do you assume that he's a racist and he doesn't like you guys when you never even met him? He wasn't even there. And so what happened? Jacob, the fiance, had to go off on him. Me, personally, I wouldn't even invite him. I wouldn't even invite him to my home, let alone my wedding. I just don't think that they've earned the right to be at your wedding. But like I said, if you want them to be at their wedding, let them, give them a seat all the way in the fuck in the back. And definitely, definitely, you don't have to put them in check. You could just let them know, this is my family right here. 
you're the one who gave birth to me, but this is my family right here. Just to say that alone, let you know, like, okay, bitch. Because if I'm saying, if I was your biological mom and you came and told me, listen, this is my family right here. You're the one that brought me into the world, but this is my family. All right, bitch, I get it. You don't got to say nothing else. That's enough right there to say. I mean, shit. Let a motherfucker tell me that, um, oh, I get it, bitch. I got it. This is your real mom. The one who raised you, and I'm just your egg donor. Bitch, you ain't got to say nothing the fuck else. Or you know what? I probably would slowly stop calling her, okay? So that's all you got to say, sweetheart. She get it. And if she don't fucking get it, then I guess she got some chromosomes missing up in her motherfucking head. But how dare she get together and just as first meeting your other family members, your other biological family members, this is how they act as, as a race thing. Girl, I would have been left at barbecue. I ain't about to sit around in nobody's motherfucking barbecue and in nobody's motherfucking house being irritated by no motherfucking body, okay? The first time you say some fuck shit, I'm out. I, I'm, I'm telling you, first time you say some fuck shit, I'm definitely out. I don't fuck with people. If they say fuck shit and they say some shit that I don't like, that irritates my soul, I leave them the fuck alone. Like, seriously, on some real shit. I leave them the fucks alone. Okay? So, on that note, we're going to end this real talk because it's pretty long. It's 7 o'clock here, which is the evening. And I'm going to go. i got to go get some hangers from Walmart. And I also want to see if they got some oxtail and a patty pie, a patty sweet potato pie. You over here snoring um, for Thanksgiving because I don't make no sweet potato pies. I mean, I can, but I got enough shit to make. So, I'm going to go see about that. And I'm going to also wish you guys a happy Thanksgiving. I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. Much love to all you guys. Happy holidays. Um, leave your comments below. Stay diva and delicious. Thanks, everyone, for your love and support of regarding the passing of my dog, Coco. And trust me, I will be all right. And I do apologize for being so upset in the beginning. I kind of like incoherent, not there with you guys. But I just have a lot on my mind right now. And in the lot on my mind is, my, is mainly my dog, okay? So I do apologize. Um... I really don't want you guys seeing me cry on camera like that because it's not that it's embarrassing because it's really not. But I just, you know what, I feel like as a person, I don't really like people to see me cry because I don't want nobody's pity. You know what I'm saying? I don't want nobody's sympathy or anything like that. I just don't. I just... I just don't. I mean, and that's the type of person that I am. Like, I'm just like, I'm like really private about crying for some reason. I don't know why, but some people cry because they want people's pity or sympathy, and I don't. I just can't take it no more, and that's how I feel about him. But I don't really like to cry on camera, okay? Unless I'm getting paid for that shit, and I ain't crying and get paid for it. But I just, you know what I'm saying? I just don't like people seeing me cry. I mean, you know, we all have our own pride and shit. I got pride too, you know, and that's my motherfucking pride, even though I have cried on camera before. I just don't like people seeing me cry. But anyway, you guys, I love you guys. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. Stay diva and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Thumbs this video up. Leave your comments below. And also make sure you leave down below. What would you do if your boyfriend um, told you, I want to just see how the girl, um, how this worked out with me and the girl that I cheated on you with. Would you go back to him? Like, what would you do? I, I need to know this, guys. And also, Kat. Congratulations on your wedding. Your fiance is amazingly handsome. He looks like a mountain man. He has his full beard. You guys look beautiful together and your whole family is actually really beautiful. And I'm happy for you. And don't let that biological family run all over you. She had her chance. Your biological mother had her chance and she didn't use it wisely. So therefore, um, toodles. Okay. I love you guys. What? Mm. Yeah. Mm. 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 Mm.